overstep my bounds here. I just feel that as, you know, representing um, residents, I just want to speak on their behalf. Um, they're worried that, um, that not can, having- Can I interrupt you a second? Yeah. The yeah. doorway, I, we've got to close do, the doors. I do love that joy. I just got a message to someone else that says they can't hear because there's too much noise in the hallway. <clears throat> Um, that door as well, too, please. Thank you. Well, if, my, if my daughter were here, was here, she'd be doing the same yeah. thing. So, yeah, uh, um, a couple concerned people in, in, in town um, just were worried that um, without a rec director, without a board to, um, to help them with the vision, um, would be difficult, like um, because what what they were making the analogy that um, the rec director would be someone who does all the nuts and bolts work of the um, of implementing the programs and writing the grants, and you know we have our whole job description here, which we'll look at in a minute. Um, but they're worried that that person at only twenty four hours a week isn't going to have the time or energy to also be doing all the visioning in the big picture. Um, I'm not proposing that anything necessarily change, but I'm, I'm putting it out there um, that um, that's a concern among residents who would be served by the um, rec programming. Um, and then um, I was also put in touch with Lisa Cruz, who is um, the, the Johnson. Um, rec coordinator and who she's really excited about the um, the fact that Morrison's going to have um, a rec a rec director um, and a rec coordinator um, because um, and what she was saying like from her own experience um, is that you know there's so much institutional knowledge even like in the rec um, in the rec committee as it, as it is. Um, and you know, just to hopefully make sure that um, that knowledge somehow gets conveyed to the new rec director. You know, that we don't just like disband the rec committee who's been doing this great work for so many years and not have that knowledge passed on to the um, the rec coordinator. And also, um, like I was saying, um, just a little concerned about where the like the vision and directions um, piece is coming from. Um, for the rec coordinator, is it coming from? Is it now going to be coming from the top? The and Trisha can speak to this, I'm sure too. Um, is it going to be coming from the town, or you know, I just and I also want to make sure, like, suddenly, you know, it's not going to land on um, Eric or Trisha's lap in a way that's too onerous. So no, and I, I think I can clarify a couple of your questions. Yeah. Right yeah. So this new position coming on board. We'll be working directly under here. It's sort of like my position as community development. Mm -hmm. And uh, they honestly, it's like me. I, I couldn't work for a board. Right. Uh -huh. it, it just would not work. The dynamics would not work. Yet. Uh -huh. We are passing everything we have on to rec yeah. to this new person. Okay. And we talked about this about what files everyone has and what plans we had and what surveys we've done. And this is something they definitely will work with. Mm -hmm. I would imagine that down the road that they will also feel like they'll do this community outreach, like sort of like I do with MAP when we talk about beautification projects for right. the community and work with community members that are interested in that path and that road of where the town will go. Um, it will take some time. This person is going to start out with summer rec, which is mm -hmm. going to be quite a bit, but I think they will have plenty of information and very good guidance as they move forward. I do not, they, no matter what, they are going to have to work with the community, just like I do with my job. I mean, that's, it's, I don't think the community should worry about where their sense of direction is going to be. Where they're going to go forward is with what the community wants. So, does right. that answer your question? Yeah, I guess, um, you know, even just from my own perspective, um, I'm wondering what's the mechanism by which that happens? You know, do, is this person fielding emails from the community? like? You know, if someone has an interest in a, in a certain, um, you know, certain rec um, offerings, like for for more sound to support, do they just email the new they, rec coordinator yes, directly? They will. Okay, directly to this person. Okay, 
They'll have, you know, an email like we do. They'll be putting out things on a front board. Mm -hmm. They'll be doing, you know, town Facebook about what's going on in the community. Is how I envisioned it. They mm -hmm. are definitely, and even in the job description, you'll see it's mm -hmm. you know social media. Um, they'll they'll have to be very 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 connected to the community. But it's going to take time. Too. Right, right. I mean, you know, right. if you ask me, in six months in my job, I would have told you I want to quit. So right. <laughs> and twelve years later, here I am still. So no, but it is going to take uh, a big learning curve. You know, it's a whole new job for the town too. So it's going to be a learning curve for Eric also, and for our staff working with a new person, but especially when you have a new, created job. Mm -hmm. Creativity is kind of the core of this. One. Like, like Trisha's position is that is, uh, our, our rec committee has had a wonderful uh, batch of ideas and events to put on that are not typically under the, the organized sports realm. You know, there's baseball, softball, soccer, or many of those different leagues that exist in our community. The rec committee. Uh, and it's, and it's uh, members have come up with alternative activities, but it's, it's stuff to draw people out of their home where we can. And uh, again, well, social and bird watching. We have the, the nature center on uh, Cold Hill. We have our more Town Forest. Uh, there are a number of events that the great communities come up with and sponsor over the years. And you know, that's the kind of thing that we're looking for that person to develop and, and that integration flow will happen with them. We're really looking for this person and, and uh, to, to build the program. They're going to have a handful to start with. Christy McAllister had ran the summer recreation program for five years prior to COVID. In the last two years, we had to, to shut it down because of that. Uh, she has graciously volunteered to continue this year uh, and, and helped with that transition, recognizing that the great benefit of a rec coordinator's position is and will pass on her institutional knowledge about that and the planning that goes into it, there's a lot of planning. So, um, big project. Trish has her music series. She has uh, Rocktober Fest, the the the, uh, the lights and the sun and Christmas uh, and the holiday the festival lights. Uh, she works throughout the year on all of these things, and she's doing other little projects in between. This is very similar in, in concept, I think, to what the recreation coordinator is going to do. They're going to have a couple of large events that they'll go throughout the year, and uh, and then other smaller events in the uh, first phase of February. It's a pretty exciting position. I'm, I'm looking forward to the application process as we get that put out and see what we get. Okay, so is that all you have on that? Um, yeah, I guess, like, again, I'm. My one concern is like, just to make sure that there's a mecha mechanism by which um, people in the town can, you know, come to this person and say, um, you know, we'd really like to see this offering in town. We have, you know, the public support for it. We have, um, you know, we have like a wide interest base, and that that that's a um, a really transparent process, and that that person isn't just you know, privileging certain types of rec, if you know what I'm saying. Like, I, yeah. I get what you're saying. Yeah. And I think you'll, like all of us here in the town offices, our door is always open. Yeah. And But everyone has to understand that our community as a whole has to understand your priority is not our priority always. I mean, I try to accommodate as many people as it for the good of everyone, but sometimes, you know, I've had requests that are just not under my forte. It's just not, it's not right for the town of Morristown. I've made that judgment call. Right, and that's what, I guess, Trisha, that's what I'm worried about. And I'm not saying that you're not making the right judgment call, but what I'm worried about is that there is a transparent mechanism I wish, like, if, you know, a group that does have a wide support base and does have a, like, a big um, user base that, of residents that live in the town, you know, even if it's not something that like is in someone's ballywick, that um, if that person sees like, okay, there's a demand for this, um, is there a transparent process to make that happen? Or if, if it's going to be something where it's like, no, we don't do that in Morrisville. Like, I, so I'm. I don't think you're ever going to yeah. have it. No, we don't do that in Morrisville. Okay. So I yeah. think they will like, you know, and I can use a perfect example group that wanted the skateboard park. Mm -hmm. They can say, we will 
support your efforts, but we're not taking that on as the town of Morristown. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I think like I I mean I try to support everyone's efforts and sometimes yeah. I say go to this person or work with this group yeah. right here. Mm -hmm. I've already heard chatter about it over here in this corner. Mm -hmm. These would be some great people yeah. to get together to make this happen. Right. I think you'll see a lot of transparency, Jess. Okay. I didn't mean it in the sense of closing a door. Yeah. Because we don't yeah. ever close doors here. Right, right, yeah. <clears throat> okay, thank you, Trisha. Sure. I appreciate okay. it. Yeah. All right, so is there any further discussion on these appointments? Go ahead, Jamie. Uh, Rickley, uh, in, the, in the meeting packet that was emailed out, I don't think the back side of that packet okay. made it. So the planning council and right that back side did not make it in yep. to the to the uh, to the what was emailed out. And the I'm curious, uh, what would need to transpire for an existing council board member to not get reappointed? I mean, as long as they, other than them saying, I don't want to do it anymore, what would need to happen for them to not be reappointed? Could, I mean, it sort of seems like a lifetime appointment. I mean, we've got people on the DRB who've been there for decades. It could be, yeah. Um, so, I mean, unless they don't do if, unless they do something inappropriately, we can remove them from the board. That's so the only case. Be, I mean, it's up to the board and. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, these things need to do processes uh, at the time of reappointment of a board that votes. Uh, by majority to not reappoint someone when that person no longer has that representation, no longer has a seat. If you're midterm of someone's term, then you have to be, by statute, a unanimous decision to remove that person. From right. The so that's the distinction between the two. Todd made that, made that clarification today. I, I mean, I, th I think maybe um, what Jamie's getting to, the core of the issue is um, term, lim term limits and why, why don't we have them? And then um, why are we just automatically um, appointing the same people and not opening that um, that vacancy to a wider pool? I understand it's not an election, but and I understand that there's there's a lot of um, there's a lot of really good reasons to keep people on on boards in terms of you know building relationships and networks and institutional knowledge. But um, well, I could tell I you mean, for yeah. the past many years we. We don't even have people that are interested in serving on boards. Yeah. And that's like a really challenging thing. It's not a matter of there's multiple people that want to be on that board. You can't find one person to be on the board. Well, that's yeah. the way it's been for 14 years. Yeah. Well, I, okay, I hear that, but I also yeah. hear, I have um, several people have emailed me and said, I filled out the form. I'm interested in being on a board. Nobody got in touch with me when the, that, the position that we just appointed came, became vacant. Well, I don't know about that. Um, so we, I don't, um, I'm not sure like where, where is the list of the people who say that they're interested in filling the positions? Typically print the email out and uh -huh. put it in the folder. Right. So, I mean, like when Donnie Blake was, um, appointed to the DRB, it was my understanding that he was the only person interested, but then I heard that, um, there were several people had put in, um, who had put in their emails over the past year or two saying they're interested in a board vacancy so um to, to my thinking that there should have been several names up for um up for you know up for that position so i'm i'm concerned i'm not i'm not pointing fingers because i don't you know um i know it's a lot to keep track of and i'm sure there's a lot of people who like say they're interested and then never follow through but, um, a ton of people like that. Yeah. And I know that we've gone a long time with, with not enough people in the DRB. We've, we've, we've had it several times, but we don't have people that enough to make a quorum, you know? I, yeah, I, I and think... Now all of a sudden yeah, people yeah. come out of the woodwork and they want to do it. That's a great thing, but yeah. that doesn't mean we should change everything we do because of it, you know? <clears throat> so right, yeah. If they can have a list, and when there's an, a vacancy, then we can appoint them. You know? So there's not really, like, a waiting list right now? No. To, when the vacancy occurs, Todd does uh, a blast as is, as our protocol to announce that it's our first one. He does all the yeah. all the sites to let you know people know we're interested that there's a vacancy on whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's out there and, and they wait for the response. Uh, if I don't remember because somebody has uh, emailed me and said that they're they're interested. 
then that's on me. That's not on Pat. That's on me for not having. Maybe we need to start a list if we don't have a current list of that. Well, I, it's about where we house the list. So if it does become apparent when there is a vacancy that those people are contacted to just mm -hmm. make sure that they're still interested. Uh, so we need to work on the process in house here as far as that goes. Does that seem like a workable solution to keep the list? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's not too onerous? I don't think so at all. Yeah. I know we've gone light on the planning commission a lot, too, the planning council. You know, if they were all looking for a member, you know, and, and you're right. Some people say, oh, yeah, I'm interested, but then they don't come to meetings, they don't mm -hmm. show up. And mm -hmm. <clears throat> I'm not saying that people won't, but right. we've had that struggle for forever. Yes. <clears throat> And it's great if all of a sudden everyone's interested in the government. Like I said, it's great. It's a great thing. Maybe we'll start, you know, managing it better. Well, like something like the Planning Commission, you probably could have a few extra members as long as there's a... Right. And we, you know? Yeah. You know? An ad hoc member or something. That's Somebody that's interested in getting in there and talking. Yeah. Because like I said, we've been short. It's good to have an odd number so that there's a... Mm -hmm. not a tie, sure, yeah. yeah, we were short on the Morristown Development Fund for yeah. months and months. But I assume we don't have openings right now right. on these boards. That's a good question. There's no openings that I'm worried about. Yeah. yeah. Um, Wait, somebody had a question? There's a couple in the chat. Um, Laura Street says, I agree with Jess, there should be a transparent process recommendations, term limits for all appointments and boards are needed. And then Christy and Tom Snip say, um, there were four people interested in the DRB alternate seat when I applied. I was the only one that showed up to be interviewed. There you go. Right. That tells you a lot. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's, that's the history of this. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, I just think there's been so much public um, input and concern around the planning and the development review process in the town that um, I think it is worth looking at um, at the process and looking at term limits. Um, I don't know what that process looks like. That's something that the select board can um, revisit and rewrite, correct? Well, I'm aware of it. If you want to go to an electoral process yeah. mm -hmm. for those seats, then the board uh, can put that through. Let me verify that. I think they have to go to the voters to yeah. uh, make that happen, and then it would happen the year following. So let me check on the process. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We could check on it. So, to make term limits work, it would have to be an election process. Is that correct? Or we can't, it can't be a mix, it can't be a part of that as well. Okay. I think that's a find out, you look into yeah. it. Um, I'm not saying, I, I'm, I just want to be clear that I'm not saying anything particularly about any of the candidates that are um, up for reappointment. It has absolutely nothing to do with these particular candidates, it's just um, based on the public, um, public input and the you know, in the town plan and um, and concerns around development in Morristown. Well, before we start getting term limits, I would want to make sure that we had enough people that were interested. I mean, the thing is, volunteering is getting harder and harder to get people to volunteer nowadays. So to give a term limit and all of a sudden kick them out, first of all, they can go to a meeting. They don't have to be on the board. That's they right. can go there and give their input yeah. and maybe even show interest if they were at a meeting. Mm -hmm. I mean... Well, I've seen members of the public many times suggest something and they changes are made because they, it's yeah. not just the person that sits on that council. Right. It's, that's that's so a that, really good that's point. That's one issue, but looking into some of this is all right, but I just don't think we should dwell on it because I know over the years to find volunteers has been hard. And just like I said, the people just up there said, what, five people? And one showed up, so. Um, Laura has her hand raised. Go ahead. Go ahead, Laura. Um, yeah, hi. Um, having served on the DRB uh, and planning, I would, I would agree with, um, historically there was an issue 
getting people. However, um, I would certainly say in the last three years um, with the population increase in Morrisville, there's been a lot more interest. And I personally know someone who requested, um, was interested in boards and was told there were no positions. I've also heard through this last election um, that, um, you know, because chairs never turn over, that there's a uh, concern that, um, you know, that um, positions don't open up, you know, partially because there's no, there's no movement at all. Um, and then also uh, a lot of concern was addressed about serving on two boards, um, you know, um, that, that's, um, that's, you know, one person's taking up two seats. Uh, but anyway, I just, this is probably not the meeting, but just to keep it open that things are changing. We have a lot more interest and a lot more population. Um, so I think we need to revisit it. Thank you. Is that it, Laura? Yes, thank you. Thank you. So we have a motion to vote on. All in favor, say aye. Aye. I forgot what it was. It's the appointments, the whole list <laughs> of appointments. I know, it was a... Aye. Can we... Judy? Aye. Any opposed? Um, nay, I'd, I'd like to look at the process. Okay, motion passed four to one. Well, I'm going to say that because uh, they introduced you to the mail and control box. You show up by my request and brought his family with him. Oh. Right. There was in the back of the room. I know. There was in the back of the room? He, he was. He, he left. Did he have to leave? Oh. He left. No, that was not too long. The baby needed to go. Yep. That was John and his family. Oh. Yeah. Uh, he is from uh, the Wilson area originally. Uh, sort of a fire department there, a volunteer, and also uh, was looking to be there in open control officer. Uh, right. Looks in, in the community so he's in uh, to, to do something, but he couldn't with his family and work, he didn't have the time to commit to the fire department. But he uh, was always loved animals and uh, thought that he, there was something to do in that realm. And he approached on two different occasions. And on uh, the second one, uh, realizing he was sincere, I sat down and talked to him like a, a great read on him and his, uh, his community spirit was genuine. And, uh, that's why I asked Bob. And, and Brian to sit with him and have a conversation so they can see what their judgments work. And uh, so that's your new animal control watch. Yeah, he's really excited to do it, too. It's great. And if I could, Francis Lyon was going to be here tonight. But yeah. He works for what I'm not a farmer's cooking syrup. So we're mm -hmm. doing sets and syrup. Oh, mm -hmm. and, good uh, night for that. He said it, it will depend on his spoiling schedule, but he did prepare a statement that I could read that to you. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, introducing himself, uh, I've been asked to be three boards in the town of Morristown. I've lived in Lamont County all my life. This includes a year in Morrisville. I currently reside in Hyde Park. I'm a consulting forester who works for Bob Bugger on the farm. I'm licensed to practice forestry in the state of Vermont. I have a bachelor's degree in forest management from the University of Vermont and a forest technician degree from Paul Smith College. I've been practicing forestry in Northern Vermont for almost 34 years. I worked with Golden Morrisville in town Morristown. I helped Morrisville water and run through their solar field. I've drafted forest management plans for the two parcels owned by the town. I worked with the Conservation Commission on thinning the Mining Pond property. Last year, I worked with the Cemetery Commission to improve the aesthetics of the cemetery located in Congress Street. I work in Morrisville. I really admire the job the Conservation Commission has done with Brian Pond. I'm more than happy to assist the town's tree work. Great. Thanks, Eric. All right, we still have uh, number five set to regular meeting schedule. Do you want to say what that is, Eric? We have, uh, the board has been meeting regularly now on the first and third Mondays of every month. Uh, and their meeting time start at 6 p.m. Is that okay with everybody? Or is... yeah. Judy? That works for me. Okay. I think if it works for everybody, we'll keep it the same. Mm -hmm. I know we changed the time at one point to a little bit later to accommodate a select You made a motion? Yes. I'll make a motion we keep it. Okay. I'll I have second a motion it. by Brian and a second by Don. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Judy? 
Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. All right, new business. Let's do those uh, changes. What's the review form, Eric? Uh, GA60 form. Yeah. So this is an annual form. You'll see this. This is, uh, goes hand in hand with the annual uh, mileage certificate from DOT, mm -hmm. where they verify the mileage that we have here in town on platform between four roads and trails. This form is a financial plan, and it gives you a breakout of income and expenses. And you can see those two line items uh, cancel each other out, which is what's supposed to happen in a perfect accounting world. Have the taxes and meet it with the mm -hmm. income. Uh, this form simply gets sent to the state. It is one of a few forms that uh, add up to or get plugged into a formula for our state aid uh, to roads, and it's also going to be used uh, in determining eligibility for the structures grant. I'm going to be submitting to a wall on the bridge. So, this is a, an absolute form that has to be run on the So, what do we do with the surplus? Surplus well. It says 38 cents. <laughs> <laughs> right? You know, you have to answer that, but it's a 38 cent mistake. You can make it for him. I think you have to put that in, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a surplus. Yeah, 38 cents. Right? Income is 38 no, cents. We're and... over. No, the income is 38 cents more. No. I can fix that. It's just a, a decimal thing. Okay. Okay, so we need a motion for this? Yes, please. I make a motion to approve it. I have a motion by Brian. Do I, I have a second? Second by Jess. Any further discussion on this? I um, so I just wanted to briefly ask you, Eric. You said you're applying for a structures grant for the Walton Road Bridge. That's correct. That's great. Um, and what's the timeline on that? Do you know? The timeline is short. Once we have to wait for town meeting and the budget to pass. Yep. And then all the forms have to be in. The forms have to be in by the 15th. Wow. Okay. And so then what's uh, if we get it? When when do we? The the money will be in the summer. We'll, okay. We'll know uh, short order the spring. Yeah. Um, once they do the review process, mm -hmm. the statute allows for maximum uh, award of two hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. But that is. Uh, it's based on how many applications they have throughout the state, so they try and divide it the equal and fair share. Mm -hmm. uh, however, they also look at the frequency of the requests, and it's been over a decade since we applied for structures grant. Mm -hmm. This bridge actually has uh, a uh, written inspection report from the state of Vermont, mm -hmm. identifying the one that you signed last November, yeah. uh, saying this bridge needs uh, reconstruction. Right. Mm -hmm. So we've got a lot of uh, ingredients. Uh, in this one, so Great. I think we've got a strong standing to get the maximum mile uh, we'll see. And is there any chance that the construction would actually happen this year, or might have to wait until next year? Who no, knows? I, when we say next year, of course, our budget is for the 22-23 season. Okay. Uh, Gary was had looked into the uh, the, out, the uh, availability of steel girders. Yeah. So once you order, the sooner you order, the better off you are. Mm -hmm. Girders that are ordered this month might not be ready until the first quarter of 23 we're still in this budget year mm -hmm. so i'm still looking for this uh, construction to happen and does not like us working over brooks in the winter time mm -hmm. so it would probably be a spring start 23 <laughs> if that is in fact the case on the girders i don't mm -hmm. we'll have to look at the contractors that did uh, on this to determine the availability of the timeline mm -hmm. so it could be a year from now it could Dr. Be, probably will be. Yes, Hopefully not, but it could be. Yeah. Yeah. And we're hoping everything stays drivable. Up until <coughs> we are. Yeah. Uh, and and, and you know, to get the structure grant, that's great for us. Yeah. You know, the, the, the voters were gracious to pass the article. Mm -hmm. Probably than 10000 because, again, this is a grant application. We're up against everybody else in the state. Yeah. They may not award us any money, so, but we still have the funding in order to, to build the bridge. So yeah. uh, if we get the funding, the money itself, if you remember the article was specifically worded about the Walton Road Bridge named in it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, the information meeting, I identified that as the bridge, and that is the target. Mm -hmm. If we had identified the money in the article to go specifically to Walton Road Bridge, we would have to gone back to the voters for approval to spend it on another project if there was money to go. Oh, Which, if we got the grant, there would be money left over from the 510,000 request. It saves us a step. As far as not having to go back, we don't use it on bridges. The money can only be used for bridges. So that's, that's how the article is. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. 
Do we need to authorize you to sign this? I want to give you with this paper here. So is there any further discussion on this motion? We need to pass this here. All in favor say aye. 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 Judy? Aye. Any opposed? The motion is passed. Next is uh, discuss the Park Street sidewalk. This is a uh, result of last meeting. We had a resident from Park Street in here inquiring about uh, our, the board's intentions as far as putting the front of the sidewalk back in on uh, what is the south side of Park Street, uh, roughly from the Copley Avenue intersection up to the Watermark Pole. I told you I'll bring it back as an agenda item so you can take an action on it. Mm -hmm. Are we going to discuss other sidewalks? I didn't plan on it only because okay. at this point, if, depending on the board decides on this sidewalk, will kind of dictate the direction that I go on the other sidewalk. So, an affirmative uh, on, on putting this sidewalk in will start a process for us to contact all the homeowners on that street, on that side of the street. Tell you right away. Them to grant us the easement. So that means the process has to be completed before we even pick up the way we're asked. So what about the money? In this case, that'll take a little bit of time, which will allow me to use the current budget year's sidewalk line to do specific repairs on sidewalks. Uh, the one that I believe is in the worst need right now is on Court Street. It is bad enough that we can't plow it without damaging our machine. And right. folks have called us this winter about why are we plowing it. There's a reason for that. It's in terrible shape. It's not ADA compliant up there right now. It needs to come out and be replaced, and that's where I would focus the current budget money on. Uh, but if, in fact, you decide not to do the Park Street sidewalk, then I have this current budget year's $39,000 and the upcoming budget year's $40,000, and we can identify more sidewalks. It's, it's a little bit of a need to hear from the board about the Park Street before I can make plans for anything. Yeah, I just uh, I know there's streets with no sidewalk. You know, there's there's a lot of bad sidewalk and a lot of no sidewalk. At least that street, I know the squeaky wheel usually gets the grease, but that street does have a sidewalk on one side of the street. I know they really want to have sidewalk on the other side again. Um, and I'm not that I'm against it, but I know I knew Court Street was really really bad, and there's other streets too, isn't there, Kevin? Uh, West High Street's basically the same. Yeah. The sidewalk, we don't plow because it's so bad. Right. And I think those should be our focus, our, our pri you know, priority. Um, not that Park Street's not, but that's why I kind of would like to have a, an outline of all of them that really need it so we can pick and choose what we want to do right now or with this money. So the and I know you don't like that, but. No, no, I do. I, I absolutely like it. Because the current budget year, I had the budget for the road erosion inventory. The state mandate we're over a year out of compliance with it. That will be completed this summer. So we have that piece checked off with back in the grace of the state. We continue to get grant money to work on armoring ditches and increasing culvert sizes on those specific roads that need it. The next budget year, you're going to see me budgeting for a sidewalk inventory. Communities that have 50 employees are bound by ADA to now have a sidewalk inventory completed. You also have to have a maintenance plan based off of that inventory. And you have to have budgetary money in there to make that maintenance plan come true. So rather than wait until we get the 50 employees, we're, we're in the 40s now. I think it's prudent for us to get the inventory done in advance of the 50 mark yeah. and, uh, and get that in motion. So there's no transition. It's already in place when the future date comes that we have 50 employees. How much would the Park Street sidewalk cost again? Well, it depends on what we use for materials on it. If we were to use a concrete sidewalk, it would be, it would be uh, significantly higher, let me put it that way. I've heard a couple of different figures, so I'm really reluctant to put the number out there without getting a new bid. Uh, yeah, we've also talked higher about paid surface sidewalk. We yeah. Know, strip, we would strip the sod, uh, excavate with the loose material, replace it with good gravel, compacted. And then the pavement strip sidewalk up through there would be a lot less expensive in the long run than the concrete sidewalk. 
longevity is not there versus concrete, but uh, we certainly still need a quality product until the ADA comes along. And if we did do the Park Street, where would where would the money come from? Uh, well, I have again, I have thirty nine thousand dollars in this year's budget. We put it out to bid. We could put it out with respect for pavement versus concrete, which is what we were talking about before. To see where the numbers come in. If in fact it's over the thirty nine thousand mark, then we would wait until the uh, the first of what well, we can actually have them start in this calendar year, as long as the work they complete this year is paid out this year. So the invoicing. I don't want to call it a game, but it's an invoicing chase such that we pay our bills for this fiscal year out of this fiscal year's money. Right. Um, but that, that can be you know, that, that's between our finance office and the contractor, it should be. And then I'd have the other the forty thousand for the next budget in order to complete the project. Trisha. I want to say when we did the town did actually the town did the trans did the sidewalk and it was to one of the state grant programs from the elderly housing to the library. Yeah. And it was like, I don't know, seven years ago, maybe. Yeah. Right. At that time, it was very well known in this community that we were taking out the sidewalk on the other side of Park Street. Mm -hmm. It was it, it was bad then, seven years ago. They, but the agreement was that we were widening it up and we were making it so it was fully ADA compliant. The state of Vermont did that whole project. The town had nothing to do with it. I so I just so everyone has a little bit on the back side of that sidewalk, and I've heard talk about it a couple different times. I understand where the people are coming from, but I also walk around this community, and I'm really glad that you're really looking to see where what is most important for walkability in our community. I mean, they have a beautiful sidewalk out there on the other side. I hear what the people are saying, but I do think it's really good to do an inventory right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think my, sorry, go ahead, Nina. Uh, well, I think when, when I've heard them talk about it, the, the residents over there talk about it and hear that they, there's a concern about safety crossing that road. Because yeah, the one resident says she has a hard time getting across the road there. Well, people come down that hill, right. me, a little bit over the speed limit. And, mm -hmm. and, uh, <coughs> I think that's a serious concern. Mm -hmm. Right. They could put a flashing light or something in the community. I know a few years back we looked at all of this because what was happening, there's so many sidewalks around town that either don't have one or They're bad right. ones. So we started thinking, why do we need sidewalk on both sides of the streets up through different places? So that one was so bad that we talked, we got a brand new one across the street. We could put a crosswalk there or even a flashing light there Something like that, rather than putting in a whole sidewalk. Can't leave with a crosswalk there because it, it, the sidewalk. crosswalk leads to nowhere. <laughs> the, the concern for the residents there is there is no driveway directly across from theirs that would allow them access to the sidewalk. They can walk on the side of the road away from the wintertime we're talking about. Uh, the snowbanks are high. So that, that was a concern, wintertime crossing what we get from the sidewalks. But it'd be nice if we have a list of all the, yeah. the sidewalks and we can pick and choose what we what's yeah, the most priority. Sidewalk inventory done by a professional uh, consultant. Uh, we're not probably going to see that even completed until the summer of 23. It's not in, it's not in next year's budget. I had to do the road erosion inventory. That was uh, a large dollar now. So uh, even with grant money, but with that, it's still $35,000 in budget. Right. Town still paid over forty thousand for there, so we have more road than they do. So I'm counting on some grant money <laughs> for the inventory itself. For the road road inventory. So uh, on sidewalk inventory, I'm not sure what to think of what the cost would be. That's going to be a complete uh, request for proposals to see what I get from consulting firms. But again, that that wouldn't be a request until next fall or budget season for the summer of '23 to be completed. Right. But we do need to replace some, like the, the Court Street one this year. Yeah, we don't need an inventory to tell us if the one on Court Street needs to be replaced, that's for sure. And if you can, you would get a machine down it to clean it. That's right. And there's, there's others. I knew you walk around and you're like, wow. And some streets don't have sidewalk on both sides. Yeah. Maple Street doesn't, and, and Congress Street doesn't. Yeah. The ADA <clears throat> require you to build sidewalks. No matter how many sidewalks are on the street, they don't require you to. By ADA, if you build a sidewalk, you will build it with right. compliance. If you build and it. And you will maintain it. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. That's the big one. We have 14 miles of sidewalk in Marshall that we currently plow and maintain. And many of it is decades, multiple decades old. Probably eight years. miles of road and 14 of high sidewalk. Yeah. Denny. Jason can correct me if I'm wrong. I've listened to this a long time. I believe that hill is 40 miles an hour until you hit the 25 mile an hour sign, which is well past that person's house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So coming down that hill at 40, that's the speed limit. Okay. Long as they can break by the time they hit that sign to 25. Right. I take that road quite a bit. I'm very conscious about it because they've had their little heart out there flashing would really let you know. Yeah. And the road's pretty rough, so you don't want to go down it too fast. But I'm just saying, I keep hearing the speed limit. It's a 40 mile an hour zone to a 25. Mm -hmm. They just speak. We have. Uh, uh -huh. Four of the solar powered speed uh, advisory signs that are uh, due in. And they check are in. They are in. Yeah. So as soon as the, the ground thaws and the highway department has the free time, they'll be in, installing those. And one of them is marked to go at the base of that hill for traffic on the end of the village. That's great. Uh, I can tell you from living on Washington Highway, you're driving past one of the department, it's my morning reminder that mm -hmm. you're not really needing to be in that big hurry. Mm -hmm. Right. They, they do. They do have an impact. It's not going to stop all the speeding cars. It's not going to slow everybody down. But it is a helpful deterrent. Um, um, I think my impression about talking about the Park Street sidewalk this meeting was that we would have a budget um, and um, some idea of possible grants that could fund that project. And so that's why I thought we were talking about it at this meeting. But I, um, Laura was bringing something up in the um, chat that I agree with too. And it sounds like that's where we're headed, um, that we, we're gonna do, we'll have a sidewalk inventory and from there we can build a, a, a five or 10 or you know 15 year plan, especially if we're looking at you know more density of downtown residents and you know just trying to make downtown more walkable. Um, it's probably in the long run. I don't know if this is true. This is my, my um, intuition. Um, more affordable to build and maintain sidewalks than it, and, than it is to build and maintain a very congested um, um, car and traffic centric downtown. Yeah. Um, and it's a healthier thing to do. So I, I mean, I, I would like to see um, if there's a way to start um, doing some groundwork even before we get the inventory, um, just doing some groundwork on funding um, funding sources. Um, I, I would just like to see that, you know, if there's anything out there that, that can help us. I know um, eventually once we get our downtown designation, again, which I've talked to Tricia about this week, um, the time on that's a ways out, but, um, depending on the town plan, but, um, you know, there's going to be some grants out there for, um, for building better places and, um, you know, more walkable downtowns and that kind of thing. So yeah, the, the bike pedestrian. Yeah. Right yeah. Through AMT, yeah. Uh, the deadline for that is a little further out than the rest of the yeah. town, but, uh, yeah. yeah, we'll definitely be applying for those money as well. Yeah. So I don't think we'd ever apply for them. Yeah. We, we can put this, uh, yeah. through the OT and put this in a good place to receive some of those, uh, I guess. Yeah. Having projects shown right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Identify engineer and have them yeah. ready with the estimates in order to put that put that forward. So. Right. Nina, you had a comment. Uh, I walk the town a lot, and um, I would like to be able to have some input about it when in this inventory, and I don't know who to talk to about that. Again, I'm happy to sit with you anytime. Come see me. <laughs> I'll sit with you, but as far as the, the inventory. Of the sidewalks being done would be done by a firm right. uh, coming in to do that. I mean, it, it won't, wouldn't be until well, the budget gets passed, but the uh, summer of 23. Well, if you're collecting uh, observations by people who walk a lot, I, I'd like to put them somewhere. Absolutely. Actually, I'd want to have them at any time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, before we.
spend too much time putting into checking on grants and things. I think we ought to see if those people are, because they've got to give us a right away. They've got to do that, not us. Right. So make sure that they're willing to do that and pay for it. Right. Before we. That's my thought. And I was. So this is probably wrong, but we did a TIF district. We did. Once to put in a sidewalk. Right? There's no new development schedule for Park Street. What Why does it have to be development? There was no development over there, right? It was just the people that were there, their taxes went up. Yeah. Tina's got a comment. A TIF district only works if you're going to do an improvement that will raise the value of the properties around right. it. Putting a sidewalk in isn't going to raise somebody's home property value enough. So a TIF district wouldn't be appropriate for something like that. Right. What would, uh, would there be something, well, like an example, I just, I'm, not, I'm on, okay. We currently have a TIF district for Lower Bridge Street when we did all that sidewalk, mm -hmm. water, sewer, repaving, the whole thing, because uh -huh. it, it seriously increased the value of uh -huh. all the properties down there because they were, um, you know, and they got right on the bypass. So that is an active TIF district that mm -hmm. we have right now. Okay. Wasn't there one over by... Well, that was for the sewer. That was... Uh, the sewer line. Trombley Hill? No, he's talking line. about industrial park. That was the sewer line. I thought there was a sidewalk. Over no, there. well, we, we did a sidewalk, but the businesses paid for it. Concept U did, and CCS, and Menage. We paid to go halfway around, yeah. hoping the town would do the rest of the way around, because so many people walk on it. So, but that wasn't a TIF district. That was something that okay. the companies there Because I know there was such things as a TIF district where the people, yeah. if they want a sidewalk, they pay for it. Not, it could not be part of a TIF district to put in a sidewalk, yeah. but that in and of itself is, is not, not enough. enough to okay. merit a TIF right. district. Okay. Just a question. Cause... Okay, any more conversation about this? Do you need any action from us tonight? <clears throat> well, we're kind of at the same location that we have been the last couple of times we've talked about this. Okay. If the board... <clears throat> Is cart for a horse or horse in front of the cart, however you want to put it. If the board doesn't decide to do the sidewalk, there's no sense in me asking these folks to give us easements. If you decide not to do it, if you decide to do it, then I'm gonna we're gonna draft a letter to all the owners and send that out to them and, and let them know. Uh, we will have a cost estimate. Uh, I've been in the service of the office, but I couldn't get an answer from them directly. I only have the cost uh, from the Belanger Road, which we took over as a town highway. And when we did that, all residents there had to give us easements in order for us to do the, the maintenance of the road. Mm -hmm. That was a $250 per household cost to give us an easement. Uh, so I, I, don't, I can't speak for Sergeant's Law Office and say it's $250 per household. Just giving you a, a, some idea of the cost it may be. Uh, for them to give us the easements for the property. The drawback is any one property owner on that side of the street no. that does not give us an easement, the project ends. We're done. And that's what Brian's saying. We kind of need to find out if they're all agreeable to it. If they are, then we may, maybe go forward with it. But okay. we need to know before that. All right. I'll, I'll draft a letter and send it out in, in a FOIA scenario. Yeah. yeah. Do we have any sense right now how agreeable they might be? I don't. I've only heard for so it might be I good imagine. to find that, right? Yeah. Do that exactly. by way of a letter. And yeah. then are we asking the residents to foot the bill like Brian's saying, or, or are we or is the town offering to foot no, the bill? No, the residents will be footing the bill for that. Okay. It's yeah. to their advantage to have the sidewalk put in. So all right, okay. We're going to have all the taxpayers coming to the plan. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is that enough for that? Next is uh, new business. We'll do number one, discuss declaration of inclusivity. Um, so this is something that I brought in front of the board um, two meetings ago. And um, the, um, the origin of it is a declaration that was signed um, by Phil Scott um, in um, May of last year. And um, the, the gist of it is that it's asking um, the towns in, Vermont, towns in Vermont to make a declaration of inclusion um, to publicly state that we are a, a community that welcomes um, 
um, diversity and that we not just welcome diversity, but that we're making, um, we're doing proactive um, things to promote diversity. Um, just adopting a declaration of inclusion is not necessarily, um, is not necessarily an act of, um, uh, a mandate to act, but it, it does come with um, the commitment to, um, to, to look at um, how our town operates, um, look at, you know, anything ranging from um, uh, requiring implicit bias tra training by our town em employees to, um, and I know that um, I've asked this of um, Jason and the police department, I know that the police department has done a lot of work um, around um, anti-bias training or um, implicit bias training. Um, and this is this declaration is um, something that many towns in Vermont have adopted. Um, um, there, a lot of them were adopted this year during um, town meeting in, um, in specific articles that towns voted on. Um, and I do have a map here. It's, um, I'd say maybe like, 15 to 25 percent of towns in um, of, um, towns in Vermont have adopted um, some declaration of inclusion, and um, there's a couple of examples in the packet here. Um, and again, this isn't necessary. Um, and also, sorry, the um, I didn't I didn't have the time to um, touch base directly with um, LCPC, but they've done um, a bunch of groundwork around drafting. Uh, a declaration of inclusion and um i think we can you know take a look at that take um you know do some discussion here and um and either decide to um adopt a declaration today or um, work on drafting one in conjunction with lcpc or just um um adopting um or adopting and approving theirs um there's a lot of different avenues we could take today I like the one that Waterbury has, mm -hmm. but I, I think what you just said makes a lot of sense is to work with LCPC mm -hmm. to draft one. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm certainly not opposed to it. Mm -hmm. I just want that Waterbury is that's very good, I think. Yeah, really concise. Yeah. yeah. And that's where it should be, I think. Yeah. And, and I would agree with you. I, I think it's a good idea. I support the concept. I support the idea. It would, uh, I think it would be good for Morristown. Mm -hmm. I, I like the idea of simple. Yeah. You know? Short and sweet, exactly. Maybe short and sweet won't get us into as many issues down mm -hmm. the road. I, I guess my question is, and I, you probably haven't done an exhaustive review of those, all those towns, but mm -hmm. what kinds of issues have come up, if any, as towns have adopted these? Right, in terms of um, implementing a declaration, I'm not sure. I haven't. Okay. Um... Do you know anything about that, Tricia? I don't know. I am curious, though, listening to the conversation here, why would we be working through regional planning for our town inclusion policy? I don't even like theirs, so I wouldn't want to go over theirs. Because to oh, me, the Mile counties? Yeah, yeah there's a paragraph in there to me is negative. Right. And I, I like, I'd rather be positive. Do you like the Waterbury one? Yes. I do too. Something positive to say, not. Put any negative swing on it. Yeah, and understand any, any one of these samples that we found, you can use the sense from one here, right? From one there, you can find one. I agree, make it short and sweet, but, but make it positive. Don't put this negative swing on it that's in the mm -hmm. LCPCs. Yeah, well, we can. Certainly not opposed to it. I mean, um, so, so which yes. which part are you saying? I'm just curious to understand, Brian. Which one? I'm hearing you saying that your paragraph you don't like. Which which what are, what are you reading is negative in the LCPC? Just so I can understand. Okay. Okay. Right here. It's the one that is in blue. We uh -huh. take pride in. We yet we acknowledge there's deeply rooted. Prejudice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is that. negativity. That's to me negative. We don't, need to, we don't need to say that. Because just like we just, you asked Trish, I haven't heard of it here more so. Of it being. So. Right. I would want to, I just wouldn't 
be positive with it. Right. But, you know, I don't like that negative paragraph. To me, that was right. negative. I hear, I hear what you're saying, that it's talking about um, prejudices and injustices. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, from my perspective, because I'm a white person who grew up in, in Morrisville, um, and I really fit the norm here, I don't feel that I experience um, prejudice or injustice. Yeah. But I think um, the, the reasoning behind this kind of a document is that you know, our communities are becoming more diverse and that um, it is the experience of some people that they don't feel, um, that they do experience prejudice and, and, um, and injustice. And it's not necessarily like the things you would think of like really overt, like hateful things. You know, it's um, maybe just feeling like, um, you know, they come into the town offices and um, maybe they need a translator to help, help them um, get some information about their, their property taxes, or um, they need help accessing, um, you know, a, you know, some, you know, a translator in the police department, you know, things like that, that wouldn't necessarily mean like really hateful, like hate crime kind of things, but just, just things that we might not think of because we're so comfortable here that um, people who may not be from here or, you know, um, have, a, have deep roots here might, might not feel as welcome. So I, I, that's my perspective, but I, I just want to like have an open dialogue about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I really like Waterbury. Is that, have you folks seen yeah. this one? I can read what Waterbury yeah. said. It's, yeah, please. <clears throat> it's a good one. Town of Waterbury Declaration of Inclusion. Waterbury condemns racism and welcomes all people regardless of race, color, religion, national origin, sex, gender identity or expression, age or disability, and will protect these classes to the fullest extent of the law. As a town, we formally condemn discrimination in all its forms and commit to fair and equal treatment of everyone in our community. Waterbury has and will continue to be a place where individuals can live freely and express their opinion. That's pretty simple. Yeah. I like it. I like it too. And it's, it's something that could be amended mm -hmm. and changed in the future. In mm -hmm. fact, we, it could be. we think we need something else in there. Mm -hmm. We put this in place and we hear... Yeah. I'm looking around the room. I'm not seeing a lot of, a lot except ourselves in, in the room. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, maybe maybe adopting something like Waterbury's might might start. pull might pull some conversation out of the community that we're not privy to, and mm -hmm. and then we could go back and take a look at it again. I'm for that. Yeah. I mean, we could amend it, like you said. You can amend those anytime. Judy, you're quiet up there. Yeah, Judy has had to leave. She oh, she had to leave. She apologized, but she had to go. Okay. So, so would we draft something like Waterberries and bring it back to the next meeting? Yep. Yep. I like the word Waterberry out. But <laughs> <laughs> well, it's really good. It'll be a thing for a yeah. while, but we get it done. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wonderful. If that's what you, if that's what you folks are from Brushy Lane, then that's what we'll do. I like it. Do yep. you like it? Yes, yeah. Very well. Yeah, and part of the impetus for this, too, is just that, you know, we've seen um, a huge uptick in, um, in our population. And, you know, because of, you know, there's all kinds of things that are driving um, people moving to Vermont. And, you know, one thing is um, COVID. A lot of people moved here um, during COVID and were able to work remotely and have settled here. They still are. Um, and they're still here. Yeah. And then a lot of, um, and a lot of people, too, um, are going to be moving into um, you know the new housing development in our downtowns, and it's and our, our, when I look around, I do see a more diverse um, population in in Morrisville, and I think like I think it does go a long a long way. You know, we all have a seat at the table to say like we're we're welcoming all people to be at the table, and so I really yeah. appreciate you all being open to hearing this. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. So you good with that here? Okay, let's do new business number two. Bill, approved part-time EMS hire. Hi, good evening. How are uh, you? When we, uh, when we elevated Colby from the part-time staff to the full-time staff, uh, at the beginning of the year, we had an open part-time slot. Uh, we've uh, made an offer that's been accepted to Evan Gaskill. Evan Gaskill is a nationally registered Vermont licensed paramedic uh, who uh, 
we have the benefit that he did most of his uh, clinical observation time through his paramedic program at Vermont Medical College uh, here in Morristown. So he knows our, our staff, he knows our, uh, our process already without necessarily being a staff member yet. Uh, uh, he was precepted by myself and Chris and Peter, the other staff paramedics, while uh, he was doing his clinical observation. Uh, since he's been registered, he's been working in a very busy EMS district, um, and uh, he's uh, accepted a, a tentative offer on the uh, part-time position for up to 29 hours a week. Okay. And I believe there's a motion in your packet. I got it. You got it? So I move to offer the position of part-time EMS to Evan Gaskell at $19.53 per hour. <laughs> This position is regularly scheduled to work up to 29 hours a week. Okay, second. Motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any further discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you. Yeah, the next one, EMS volunteer roster edition. Uh, Emma, uh, Emma Guarnano is a uh, LMA at the manor uh, who lives in Walcott. She just completed her National Registry uh, EMT uh, program, uh, and she's asking to come on board uh, as a volunteer member on the roster. That's great. She takes care of my mom. Yeah. Yeah. She's also a great basketball player, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> seen her play a lot of games. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we're asking for her to be added to the roster so we can begin her uh, her onboarding process to uh, be a, uh, a volunteer member of the squad. Great. Do I hear a motion regarding this? So moved. Motion by Brian. Is there a second? A second. Second by Jess. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> motion is passed. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Next, approve the MCC bylaws reprint. Right. So when I worked last year in and around the Conservation Commission and reading the bylaws, it was uh, obvious to me that the document itself just needed to be recreated. It had multiple fonts. It had been reprinted so many times you could barely read some of it. So I tasked Sarah with taking the document and recreating it word for word. Nothing has changed. There have been no updates to the bylaws whatsoever. Simply put it into a form, and we never could find a signature page from a select board that approved the bylaws. So, <laughs> uh, so it's nice so we can kind of make a little more additional walking. When was that, Ron? <laughs> I, I reviewed it and I appreciate the work that they did to uh, make it much clearer. Good. Thanks, Good. All right, so I have a, a motion regarding this. I make a motion to adopt the. <clears throat> Re-inscribed but unchanged bylaws of the Morristown Conservation Commission. I have a motion by Jess. Do I have a second? Second. Second, second by Brian. Brian. Is there any further discussion on it? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Uh, next, review and approve recreation coordinator job description. So this job description has made its way through several hands for review and edit, uh, where I felt it had passed through and, uh, and received the, the approval of many folks involved in this, not just me. Uh, so it started off with Seth Hoffman, who's the current uh, chair of the recreation committee, uh, and writing that. She is an attorney by trade, uh, wrote a great document. Uh, and that was our starting point. It came from Pearl to my desk. Uh, Trish was also involved. Sarah Haskins. Sarah Haskins. Okay. Trish, talked a little bit yeah. about it. So we had, we had many eyes on it at that point. I made a couple of, of changes on it. I sent it to the HR department. HR department took some things out of it that didn't really uh, fit in the job description. It was, it was talking about benefits. That is no longer the job description, so we took those out. Right. A couple of changes as well. Uh, nothing drastic, but this is the document that we've come up with uh, to put in front of you for approval. Thanks for taking the time to do that. Mm -hmm. It needed it's a brand new position, and again, very little that we do in municipal government is proactive. 
most of everything we do, we have to support of our constituents. <laughs> and this position can be equally as powerful as the one that Tricia serves in. Yeah. Uh, and it's very important to get off the right foot. I think a strong job description does that. That's great. So Eric, when I was reading this over, and I think you answered this question earlier when we were talking about recreation, the board, um, would this position oversee, for example, Morrisville Youth Soccer and Morrisville Youth Baseball or work in conjunction with those groups? Would, would not be involved with those groups. They, they have a strong family structure, uh, parent involvement in keeping those programs going. Certainly not adverse to them working in conjunction to some extent. Really, their focus summer wise and those times when soccer is ongoing is going to be setting up and, and implementing our summer recreation program. They are going to have their hands full. Okay. Um, again, we, the structure we have currently will allow for them another year. This year, Christy is, is, is really going to be guiding and leading. So the recreation director will have hands on during the day. Another year, that recreation director will be doing more of Christie's role, which is more of the support services logistics for our public. We would have other staff hired for the summer to, to take for the day to day stuff. Doesn't mean they won't be involved, but that really is a key. A, it's the largest program that they have, uh, hugely popular and very well uh, saw after, very much saw after. We have a lot of phone calls on. Um, so that would be their focus. The organized sports, not that they're not important, but we're looking for this position to be that creative recreation piece that they push bills for our arts and music. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, there had there had been some input um, by um, Lisa Lisa Cruz who was saying from her perspective as a a rec coordinator in another town, it would be really helpful and useful for her to have one point person. Um, in Morristown to contact around all of the um, all of the different youth um, programs like youth soccer, basketball, etc. I mean, I, I I'm I guess it sounds like that's out of the purview of this position well, to, start. Is, to start. Yeah, yeah. John, yeah. Johnson has the town of Johnson, right? The municipality yeah. has structured and organized their sports, little league softball. Yeah, um, we don't. We've never done that. That's no. always been handled by parents. It's a huge load, right? Uh, and yeah. it's also very yeah. heavily. Uh, well, parent, calendars, uh, right? <laughs> the strong parents go to this person a lot, so it yeah. would detract <laughs> from other energies that they would need to play. But we really have a certain right. program. Johnson does not. They have organized sports, but. Also, right. This person yeah. could never coordinate all the programs around the morning. No. No, right, yeah. A calendar so the community does see. Here's soccer, here's your different, who you go to see about what different events yeah. are running in town. Right. Uh, it's really apples and oranges compared to Johnson. The information is. resource, absolutely. That, that's certainly like, right. that's a great, great point because yeah. using our town web page, we can now have this person make contact with the soccer league and the and the baseball, softball, basketball type thing and have their information, their, their contact people on our page. Right. Okay. Do I have a motion regarding this description? I move that we uh, are looking to approve. I move we approve this job description for the recreation coordinator. Okay. I have a motion by Don. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Brian. Is there any more discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Number six, review and approve after school and summer expanding access grant of $100,000 over two years. I want to turn this right over to Trish. Trish. Came to me with this, and I said, go for it. Okay. <laughs> This is a state of the Vermont grant that they're doing. It's uh, COVID money, like most things are out there right now. It's an after school so it's summer expanding access grant. This is for programs that are either new or expanding, as we are as not doing it for two years, our summer rec program. It is a 50000 a year grant. It's over a two-year period. Um, 
that it's to improve the quality of summer camps, improve uh, your options. It's to really make it so kids would do it as a learning experience. Um, we're just looking to apply. There's $4.2 million. We really felt like we should apply for the 50-50, 50,000 each year. So I'm here to ask, like I used to two years ago, come before you and say, can we apply for this? Well, sometimes she goes and does it, but this one had bigger numbers. <laughs> that's, that's why I'm here. Okay, I've done a lot of little grants. But this one was sort of a lot of money. So, Senator so Eric, I think we better get on with it. So do I hear a motion regarding this? I, got, I have a motion. I move to authorize Trisha Fuller, our community development coordinator, to apply for the after school and summer expanding access grant. This grant will be for $50,000 a year for two years. I'll second it. I have a motion by Don and a second by Brian. Is there any more discussion on this? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, approve the warrants. Make a motion for approval. I have a motion by Brian. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Don. Any more discussion on it? I'm going to throw out my two cents on this because it's a great time to do it. Yeah. Don is a new board member and he asked this question. Yeah. We never explained, and I think it's important to be <laughs> right. No, it's a great question. Yeah. We, we approve the warrants every meeting. Everybody, like, well, who are we arresting this week? And right. <laughs> That was my comment. The warrants, uh, so the warrants are approving that the board is uh, reviewing a, uh, a list that is part of the finance department of all receipts or bills that have been uh, invoices that are due to be paid. And the board reviews that at every meeting to take a look and see if they're right there. If they have any questions. Uh, so they have the signature list for the different top areas, subject areas. These are actually the, the uh, invoices that are due. So the board reviews this compiled list, which is this year. They can always go to this kind of individual one, but they're all listed here. So that is what the warrants are not to do. Thanks for that clarification, because I get that, gotten that a few times. What are you guys always approve of the warrants? Who are you, you arresting? You do it every meeting. We take it for granted that everybody knows what it is. So right. Most of the right. All right. Is there any further discussion on the warrants? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Warrants are passed. Next, town administrator report. Uh, just a few things here. Uh, I'll say that on the Wednesday following our select board meetings at 10 a.m., I have a staff meeting for all the building staff and department heads here in this building. And I invite any one of the board members to attend that. You can know your general government uh, personnel will be here, along with the department heads as well. I ask questions, they can ask questions of you. If you have time, it's a tough time of day. When is, when is it? Yeah. Wednesdays uh, at 10 o'clock in the morning, yeah. always following us. Okay. Mm -hmm. How long will you be doing this? Right? The meeting itself, you, if you're there at the beginning or wherever we stop, we'll give you 10 minutes, five minutes, whatever you've got to give. Uh, the meeting lasts an hour or an hour and a half, depends on what we have for topics to discuss. We do uh, a variety of stuff. I go over the, the agenda for the select board, what we discussed, what you know, so that everybody can. Uh, the staff here knows what we were dealing with and, and how the board is, what direction we're going in. Uh, I sometimes have incorporated uh, videos, just some training stuff uh, on leadership uh, and the uh, qualities of leadership. Uh, so I have a building full of them. We're just looking for a place to stand out to. Them. So, uh, yeah, so um, it, the meetings anywhere from where I am. You come in anytime during that. There can only be two of us here, right? Yeah, there are going to be two board members at any given time, but otherwise they have to wear the meeting. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Denny, you had a comment? The fire department, I have to work for a living. I'm the last volunteer department head, so I won't be here to call me direct. Denny is the only one. I talked with Denny offline, but uh, Denny's not the only one that uh, is not here for that meeting because he is usually in some uh, location. <laughs> Undisclosed location. <laughs> doing all kinds of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the RFPs are going out for our paving projects, so specifically the for the Garfield Road and that we're we're, we're always waiting to see what the Garfield Road is going to come in at. We're pretty sure it's going to take up most of the five hundred thousand dollar appropriation. Any money left over will be combined. We have some money uh, left over in this year's budget that we're going to use to with. If there's money from there, we'll go to another road. Uh, 
but the, the RFP is going to go out uh, this week. The bridge RFP will go out very soon after that. We don't want to wait too long because the length of time it's going to take to get girders ordered and all that stuff. Uh, so that's going to go out. I just need to do some final discussion with Tyler Mumley, the engineer, just to make sure that we've got everything covered in that. Okay. Those are my comments. That's it. I also want to add a big thank you to our highway department that, again, uh, all, all our staff work so hard for this town. This community is so dedicated. But time and time again, our highway department is out day after day after day. We see a little bit of rain, they see ice on the roads. So, I mean, I, I just uh, have so much admiration for the hours they put in, the sacrifice that their families make, and not seeing them when they leave their cell asleep. So, uh, always, always a kudos for the highway department. Thank you. Any questions for Eric? All right, select board concerns. Don, your first one. Well, um, I guess I just want to thank Sarah and Eric for helping me through last week and getting me ready for tonight. And I appreciate that. It's great working with you and welcoming me to the board. So I appreciate that. And to the board members as well. Bob, I you know appreciate you welcoming me to the board as well. Absolutely. Good. You're welcome. Jess, you have select board concern? I do. Oh, always. <laughs> That's all right. Um, so I wanted to um, welcome Don to the board. Um, it's going to be great to work with you. And um, I also want to express that I always have enjoyed, um, did enjoy working with Gary. And um, sorry to see him go, um, but I think this will be a good new chapter of the board as well. Um, in other news, um, I've been thinking about um, looking ahead to our um, cannabis retail and seeing Matt, and Matt actually has his hand up there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm not sure if he wanted to chime in or not, but um, I, um, I'm, I know that when we were discussing um, the potential um, to allow um, retail cannabis in Morristown, and you know, of course the town voted on it, um, we all, I think we all agreed that it was important to, um, to put together some kind of like regulatory board, board. Um, because I think we do want to make sure that, um, that we are regulating signage. I, um, one of the biggest um, takeaways I, I got from our informational meetings was that um, one of the best way to, ways to keep um, young kids from being really excited about trying to buy cannabis is um, is regulating the signage, um, making sure it's not cartoony or bright and that it's tasteful, um, and also making sure, and I know that um, Matt's um, proposed, um, and I think he's already working on um, renovating the space, it is far away from schools, but that we just set up a, um, you know, our, um, our radius um, requirement from um, schools and recovery centers. Uh, so I want to um, put that forth as uh, something that we need to work on as a board and ask Eric if um, in, for input on to how to um, make that process happen. You are going to be the cannabis control board. We are going to be the, oh, okay. Okay, so it, it when is, do we, uh, okay. It's a mirror image of the liquor control board. Okay. We will set parameters for the, the retailers in uh -huh. the area, the manufacturers in the area. That's what I thought. We'll, we'll mm -hmm. be the ones to decide. Many, many things. Uh, mm -hmm. I have not give, taken a dive into it. Mm -hmm. I was going to say given, but I think you corrected me. <laughs> I would have corrected you too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we're, we're in, in need of creating that, and uh, I, much of it is still a mystery because I've been wrapped up in bridges and, <laughs> and other things. So, uh, but yeah, more to come on that. We definitely, okay. but it will be the select board that will be the candidate okay. control mm -hmm. board for our community. Okay. Um, maybe we can just look ahead, um, or, you know, and and set a um, uh, a date, you know, like it could be in May or June. Like let's, you know, let's have our first discussions around that. When, um, because the uh, retail cannabis um, operation can start in October. Is that correct? Well, would you like to bring um, Matt into the conversation? Sure. Yes, <laughs> Matt. Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Matt. Hi. Hi. Thanks, Jess. Um, yeah, so retail can start October 1st. The manufacturing of edibles, which I'm also doing in that building, can start on July 1st. 
Um, I mean, I sent a message with Todd Thomas and Eric today about trying to get our change of use permit uh, thing scheduled and lined up because on March 16th, we will be submitting our um, applications for provisional licenses. And that will basically allow us, once we get the provisional license, that will allow us to start opening bank accounts and doing that kind of stuff that we've been waiting to do. Uh, so March 16th is when we're doing provisional licenses. We're trying to get the change of use permit going. I am talking with, um, uh, I believe his name's Ray at the graphic designs place about some signage. And I've been meeting with, um, with Allison and, um, uh, shoot. Alice, I've been meeting with the healthy Lamoille Valley folks about um, signage and stuff, trying to work with them as well, just trying to make sure we're all on the same page and uh, not putting up, spending money on anything that nobody's going to like. <laughs> Sounds good. I also, I, I tried to send an email to Don McDowell today, uh, just kind of catching him up on some stuff, but the email got kicked back to me, so I'm not sure what a good email for you is, Don, and congrats on the seat. Yeah, if um, Eric and Sarah both have good emails for me, I'm trying to get my the town email up and running here soon. Great. Thanks. Thank, thank you. Um, do we want to have Matt hold off on signage before we um, do um, some regulatory measures around signage? I think it's going to be important to yeah, and I'm not really pulling the trigger on anything yet. Okay. I'm kind of just designing it. Uh, you've seen my logo. Um, yeah. I know, I know from Todd how much, how many square feet of signage we're allowed. So maybe yeah, if you guys want to figure out, I mean, I do have a banner. I have something I could do temporary. But if you guys want to figure out um, some parameters around, I mean, just you know, you guys have all seen my logo, I think, so you kind of know what I'm going for. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, should, so then should we try to meet sooner rather than later around at least the signage part? Well, let me dig in a little bit at yeah. the state level. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, because I, I honestly, we haven't seen a lot of guidance coming through to the VLCT chain mm -hmm. about can, local cannabis control work. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me poke back rather than just sit here waiting for yeah. the ball and let me yeah. just go out and see if they've got all my hands. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. Great. I started. I mean, they haven't given us the applications that they're supposed to be accepting on March 16th yet. So we're all we're all figuring it all out as they're releasing it. And it's kind of unfortunate we don't have more info, but we're all kind of learning as it goes here. So, you know, I'm open to working with you guys and doing it correctly. But we are in a, you know, time's going to go quickly here. October is going to come before we know it. Yes. Right. We'll, work, we'll work on regulating you. <laughs> 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 I'm actually I'm actually very happy that the Cannabis Control Commission, I believe is what the municipalities are going to call it. I'm, uh, I'm really excited that it's going to be you guys because we've been in communication kind of from the beginning and it seems like we're on the same page or, you know, we're willing to work together. So I'm glad that it's been decided and it's not something that needs to be like jerked around with. All right. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, and then I had another, um, uh, um, like two, just two more quick ideas. Um, I had a great conversation with Dave Iacoboni last week, just around um, some ideas around, um, you know, big picture, you know, um, trying to draw from some of his experience serving on the board and his um, knowledge of um, from being a state rep. Um, so one, um, one idea that um, we both, tossed around a bit was um, looking ahead to the next budget cycles um, and looking at the, um, the goal of working more collaboratively with other boards. Um, is, there, is there any interest or um, is there any interest in getting together, say the school, the village and the town to talk about big upcoming capital expenses um, coming in the future, so that you know it, you know that we're not we're not hitting taxpayers with um, big ticket items all in the same year. So you know if the school is coming up with um, a big capital 
um, budget item that you know we don't hit them at the same time with a big sidewalk project, for instance, or you know however that goes. Just to start build, even just to start building, check like a quick check in. Yeah, um, we or, do that. You know, we we have done that. We do. Okay, yeah. I I haven't been part yeah. of part of that process, right. and and again, you know, I'm new to the whole process and the whole budget. Yeah. We do it, um, we've done it with both the trustees and the school board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so that, you know, just opening that dialogue, or at least I guess, I guess in that case, I'd like to be part of that process. Yeah. Um, and then another thing, I know that Judy had um, touched on it, and I just want to keep bringing it forward, especially with um, the addition of Don and the board, um, looking to um, start um, the forward thinking and the visioning process um, where we're, we're pulling in public input, um, where we seek out uh, um, a professional facilitator um, and really start looking at and, you know, bring in entities like um, the Mobile Housing Par Partnership, for instance, um, and just and just starting to look at, you know, what is our, our, our grand vision for the town of Morris, Morristown, doing all this prior to um, prior to trying to draft a town plan prior to, you know, doing that at the at the, you know, the 11th hour. Um, really, um, I feel like we've gotten a lot of feedbacks from the um, feedback from the public saying that we really want to be part of a process, a visioning process. The town is growing and changing. Um, so, how do we do that? Who do we bring in? And um, from Dave, I got um, he said he has a lot of resources for professional facilitators that would be free or very free of charge or very cheap. Um, a lot of resources from the Vermont um, Council on Rural Development who could help facilitate. Um, so, um, and you know, that process would, it's gonna be probably really big in scope and we can decide how we wanna, um, how we wanna structure that and, um, you know, to start planting seeds in a bunch of different areas because, you know, like everything takes a lot of time to come to fruition, so. Yeah, the main thing is get people to come to planning council meetings. Because right. That's where everything starts. There, right. And anybody well, can go there anytime. Well, I think what we're talking about, what Judy was talking about, and I'm thinking, is something out that would involve perhaps members from the planning council. Council, but that would be bringing in all kinds of interested parties outside of the agenda of a planning council. You know, where we're really doing like a facilitative process where everyone says like. This, these are the, you know, these are the five, um, these are the five priorities for the town. Um, you know, these are the, the residents' five priorities for the town, and that, you know, that can help um, di direct all kinds of things. Um, and, and rather than taking up like a planning council agenda with that, I mean, that's not necessarily, I'm not. Yeah, but that's... they took up select board meeting after select board well, meeting but, but we're at trying... the end of the process. Right, no, but that's what I'm saying <laughs> is like, we're doing, like, doing this it's... proactively right. so that that doesn't happen right. in 2030 or whenever the next. Right. Yeah, well, you know, it's actually going to start sooner than that. They start right. working on it right away, but right. it's good. It's good to, good to start. Yeah, the yeah, just saying, I mean, I've been involved in a couple of things over the years, not necessarily about that, but I have a similar setup where you have probably no more than three, better to have probably two sessions because people can lose their energy pretty quickly. They're excited about something, they're robust the very first meeting, the second meeting they're still there, but they start going to third and fourth meetings, they start to lose interest in the <laughs> crowd levels. So you, what you're looking for is uh, the facilitated discussions, you can have pre-arranged topics, it can be that, that kind of thing in a, in a four hour block. Mm -hmm. On a Saturday morning, or something along that line mm -hmm. that, that captures people, their ideas, and then you can come back after you put those stuff together at the second meeting and say, This is where you're at, what is the priorities you go from there. And then just your presentation to the select board mm -hmm. at the end of it. Does that yes. sound right? Yes. Okay. That sounds like yeah. a great jumping off point to me. Tom. I noticed that planning boards, Zoom. No. No, they're not. Could they be Zoom? Uh, it would require somebody else to work, to hire somebody to run the meeting. Because Todd can't, Todd can't do both. Right now we have Sarah that's running the, the Zoom portion. It would require another person. Possibly, you know, encourage people to reach the staff looking at it. We'd have to hire him, hire somebody to do it. But you look at the board, see what the best choices to, I mean, I'm not sure. Yeah, it's been brought up a few times. Uh, it's tough. It's still tough with Zoom. I, I find it 
very difficult with Zoom. Yeah. You know, it is, is. is that a, um, forgive me for um, um, my ignorance on this, but is that a, um, a pro is that a, a protocol in law that um, that you can't run a meeting by Zoom without a separate person actually? Um, I don't know, but Todd can't no, it's do a, both. It's a logistics thing. What's that? It's, it's a, a logistics, logistics thing? thing? Okay. Todd not only sits uh, as a planning director for planning council meetings, right. he also takes the minutes. Yeah. Uh, so for him to take minutes, monitor, which is, mm -hmm. is too much. Too much for him to keep track of. He couldn't do it without assistance, and the planning council would not give him any indication that they wanted to resume or not. Can we, um, does the select board have any authority to request a volunteer from the public to um, to run the to run the Zoom? I don't know. I would bring Todd in to have okay. a conversation with him. Yeah. Okay. I've talked to him about it, and I'm not. I don't think he's against it. Just just don't want to do it. You know, right. there's nobody that. That they would come to every meeting and do that, you know. Well, you don't have to come. To... You do. No. You have to be. Well, no. I mean, you can run a Zoom meeting where everyone's sitting in there. Yeah, you can host a meeting, but you still have to be able to be the be here doing it, you know, with the questions and everything. You know, you can't. Well, no. Well, I was thinking the person who hosts it could doesn't even necessarily have to be there. Right. Like the planning council could, you know, be just another block in the Hollywood squares and um, mm -hmm. did you like that reference and throw back um, and the and then the person running it could just be sitting at their home managing the chat and answering calls yeah it could just be a member of the planning council too right. it doesn't have to be done if they're willing to do it yeah if they're willing to do it right right they have to decide whether they want to do it or not right I talk about tomorrow uh, yeah. you got a planning council meeting coming up I had the conversation with him, but bring it up again. Would the resistance just be around um, not? It's just really too difficult to too make happen. Okay, okay. Okay. Is that it? Yes. Brian. <laughs> All I want to say is welcome, board. Thank you, Brian. And I want to thank everybody the plow guys, the fire department, police department, all of you hard working office help. You do a wonderful job, so. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. <clears throat> and I'm good tonight. I'm good. Is there any other business? We knew that, but you're going to tell us. Thank you. <laughs> no other business? Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion Second. by Don, second by Brian. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? We're now adjourned. Eight o'clock. Uh, That's good. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. I mean, we have some meetings until like 9.30 or 10. Oh yeah, 10. I've been here to...